everybody, and welcome to sessions 9 and 10 of our microeconomics class. Um, today's exciting for a couple reasons. Um, first, we're finally talking about supply and demand, which is kind of the stereotypical thing that you learn in an econ class, and we're, we're finally there. Um, the reason it took us nine sessions to get here um, was by design. I wanted to give you more of a foundation in, in why we care about economics and public policy instead of just throwing the math at you. Um, and so we've talked a lot about fairness, about redistribution, about equity, um, about individual preferences, about game theory, all of these other things. Um, the reason we did that is because it gives a good foundation for um, talking about supply and demand, um, but putting it in the context of public policy and public administration and making it more practicable than just looking at formulas and finding where lines cross. Um, and so hopefully it, it should be um, more understandable now that you've had more of a foundation that we've been able to build on over the past few sessions. Um, the second reason today's exciting is because it's um, the most math that you're going to have in the rest of the class. Um, after today, there's very minimal math. Um, you'll still do some stuff with supply and demand when we talk about um, market failures and other things like that, but mostly um, after today, we've done the mathiest bits of the class. Um, there will be a tiny bit of calculus today, but again, I will give you the formulas where necessary um, um, to figure out derivatives and slopes and other things like that. Um, the rest of the math is just algebra, setting two equations equal to each other and finding where they cross. And you can do tons of that with Desmos or with a graphing calculator. Um, and so there are lots of shortcut ways to, to do this math. You don't need to Hopefully it won't be too onerous um, as we go through this. Also, there will be lots of resource videos um, or lots of extra videos on the resources page that you can refer to um, that will walk through lots of different examples of how to find um, where supply and demand cross, how to calculate elasticity, um, how to figure out the effects of monopolies, other things like that. Um, and so hopefully those resources are helpful. Um, the other nice thing about having this be the stereotypical topic that every econ class teaches is there are like a billion YouTube videos out there of how to work with supply and demand and find average costs and variable costs and elasticity and all of this stuff um, because like any econ class covers this. And so tons of people have made videos of this. Um, I will link to the good ones that I found online. Um, you can watch those in addition to this class's stuff or just as a replacement for this class's stuff if it makes more sense to watch theirs, I don't care. Um, all I care is that all I care about is that you understand this and you get practice with this, and that it, it makes sense in the context of public policy and public administration. So let's go ahead and get started. If we go to the slides for today, we can see what we're going to be covering here. Um, so the plan for today is we're going to talk about a few different topics. Um, this looks like a lot. Um, again, this is like two different sessions combined into one. Um, and so if you want to spread this out over a couple of days, be my guest. Um, this is a lot of content, but it's two sessions, um, which is generally two weeks of content. And so it's a lot. Um, we'll start off talking about supply and demand um, and where they come from. And so we'll split this into two sections. We'll talk about the demand side, where a demand curve comes from. And we'll talk about the supply curve and where that comes from. The fun thing about these things is that rather than be based on like imaginary numbers like we've been working with in, with indifference curves um, where utility is just kind of this made up concept of happiness points and um, indifference curves are just there's an infinite number of them in weird shapes and they're really hard to measure they're imaginary um, demand curves and supply curves are actually real they're based on real data that's out in the world you can measure these things you can actually calculate real live um, intersections of, of lines. They're not made up. Um, and so again, it's more practical. It's more um, easier to grasp, I think. Um, and so hopefully it should be um, relatively straightforward. Then we'll talk about elasticity again. We talked about this a few sessions ago, um, but today we're going to link it directly to the demand curve because it's actually connected to um, demand curves that you see out in the wild and how, um, and how they're sloped and how they're shaped. And so we'll be able to, to see kind of the practical aspect of elasticity. Then we'll talk about what happens um, as firms get bigger um, or as firms start working together or clump together. Um, there are different things that happens, happen to their costs. You can actually um, create more stuff for cheaper as companies or as firms get bigger. And so we'll talk about some of these different effects that occur in the wild. 
Um, then, this is the most important section for public policy and public administration. We're going to talk about taxes and what happens when you impose taxes on different products or on different firms um, and how that distorts markets and how, um, from a policy perspective, that's kind of the job of the government is you tax for good reason. You're supposed to raise revenue so that you can govern. Um, but you want to do it in a way that minimize, minimizes the distortions of the market that you're, you're taxing. So we'll see different guidelines for this and what happens um, when you impose taxes on different firms and on different markets. Um, then we'll briefly talk about this idea of changes in supply and demand. Um, sometimes when there are structural changes in a market, um, a, new, a new product is invented or preferences change over time. People stop liking things. They start liking other things. It changes shifts in markets and you can actually model that and you can move a demand curve out. You can move a supply curve down. Um, there are other things that happen. So we'll talk about you know, the consequences of changes to markets. And then finally, we'll talk about this last topic here because this is also really important for policy. Um, what we'll, what we'll notice when we talk about supply and demand here is that if you're an individual firm, you can't make up your own price and you can't set your own price, even if you would love to, um, to maximize your profit. You're kind of stuck with whatever price exists out in the world. Um, you're what is called a price taker. And if you're a price taker and it's too expensive to sell your thing, um, then you might have to go out of business. And so what price takers want to do is they want to be able to make their own prices. They want to be able to set their prices. Um, but they can't do that by themselves. They have to gain something called market power. Um, and so we'll talk about some different ways that firms try to build market power to be able to, to be non-competitive and be able to set their own prices and escape this price-taking world. And this is important for policy because often we don't want firms to do that um, because it leads to worse outcomes for consumers and it leads to discrimination and other um, outcomes that we might, necessarily, might not necessarily want. And so we'll talk about ways that firms do this and ways that the public sector can kind of step in to avoid this. Um, and so that's what we'll be talking about today. So let's go ahead and get started with supply and demand.